I think within the digital time that we are living, that we don't really have borders as as long as the production and the 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 melody the melody pipe yeah. works. Then then uh, people don't bother that they don't understand the language. Welcomen to Melody Pod, a podcast of Melody Pipe. Episoden filmes och kan ses på melodypipe.com. Lyden är er spilt in med utstyr från Forsound. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever English speaking episode of Melody Pod, the official podcast of Melody Pipe. Our first international guest is a Dutch entrepreneur and a hip-hop mogul. I just gave him that title. He's going to have to live with it. I'm pleased to present my friend, Solomon Kiffel. Solomon, welcome to Melody Pod. Thanks for having me, Andreas. How's, how's it going? Good, man. I'm here. Uh, I'm back home. I, I see this as my home. All right, so we're in Stavanger, Norway. Yes. And you speak English, so you're going to have to explain to the audience why is this home? Yeah, at first, like, I'm, I'm going to do my best to speak as good as English as, as, as possible, but I'm, uh, I'm from the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. I live in the Netherlands, but I'm born in Stavanger. I was born here in 96, and um, uh, actually my dad, uh, he studied here and he grew up partly here, and um, my mom did that in the Netherlands. And my parents are from Eritrea, and uh, yeah, independence came. And uh, after they studied, they went back uh, to uh, Eritrea, and that's where they met each other. And uh, so your mom has never been to Stavanger then, or not till they met each other. Okay. Uh, so she studied. Uh, she after the, when the war started, uh, my par- my mom and her family went to the Netherlands. She studied there, and when independence came, they they went back home like everyone did. And that's where they met each other. And my dad had the wish to uh, that one of his kids would be born in Stavanger, where he actually studied and grew up. And my mom had the wish that someone would be born in Rotterdam, where she grew up. Okay. So my older sister is uh, born in the Netherlands, and I'm born in Stavanger. But I was here for a really short time. And when I was born, we went back to Eritrea. I stayed there till I was uh, like four or five years old. And um, then when my parents divorced, I went back to, to the Netherlands with my mom and my older sister. So yeah, I, I always feel the connection with Stavanger. Uh, when my head is almost exploding or when I need to relax, this is my go-to spot. Uh, okay. My dad and actually my brother and sisters live here from my dad's new marriage. So it, it feels like uh, charging. It's uh, when I come here, I... Uh, so do you have three passports then? Or? No, actually, I I had to uh, <laughs> like uh, not only have the Dutch passport, okay. um, but I got a Stavanger tattoo. That, so that's compensating right. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so if they are doing hard at the border, I tell them, look, I'm a really Stavanger guy, <laughs> and it says in my passport that I'm born in Stavanger. So okay, yeah. cool. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about why you're here, yeah. uh, and not just the fact that you're Stavanger at heart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It was difficult to find information about you online. I yeah. really had to dig deep and use my CIA connections. But <laughs> you started a record company at 17, right? Now, actually, I uh, when I was like... Did I get the first thing wrong? Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit wrong. It's a bit wrong. But you're close. You're close. <laughs> actually, I, uh, I helped by um, setting up a record label that was owned by uh, two close friends. Mm-hmm. And... We grew, we grew up together in the same neighborhood. So actually, we have to go a bit further back. I was like 14, 15 when I started filming uh, music videos for them. Okay. So because were they artists? Yeah, like one of them was an artist and, and they are brothers. So the other one was his manager. And okay. I was like the video guy and making sure we got the content that was needed. Um, because we went to... Um, it's called Grafisch Lyceum. It's like a really creative school in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we really uh, got to learn a lot about cameras, about audio. I had my own radio uh, show when I was like 13, 14, together with one of those guys. Nice. We did like printing t-shirts. It was a really nice school. I think that's also where my interest for uh, for media and being creative started. And at a certain point, I um, I think that's around 17, 
we got a big success of one of our artists because at first we were just popular in Rotterdam and by that time we did you didn't have any kind of streaming platform so it was just record a song make a video put it on YouTube and we'll see from there and when I was like 17 we started to sign more artists and I uh, switched my camera for the business side so we we're doing some like management publishing bookings record label side we we're doing actually all all parts that were needed to help the artists that uh, that we were working with so yeah we we in, in two three years we got we managed to be uh, the leading independent record label of uh, of the Netherlands nice. um, so did you know what you were doing or were you just no, feeling your way no no <laughs> like f- at the same time i i um because by that time, uh, my dad was living uh, in Abu Dhabi, and I wasn't really doing well at school. But I had a passion, and I was like, uh, I liked to do, I liked working more than learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, I asked my parents, please give me one gap year. And uh, if you allowed me to, to succeed in that year, then you guys will be happy that I didn't go to school. If I don't manage to do well, I'll go whatever you guys tell me to go and cool. and start the school life so actually that gave me reason enough to to learn a lot and i also like in that two years we we learned a lot because the success of the artists uh, so a lot of people come to you you got to learn um so yeah after uh, two years of of just doing whatever that comes to you like i didn't know anything about the legal parts we just we were just finding out as an independent like each record label that just starts and at a certain time i uh, yeah like it's it's always yeah what i've learned from that period is starting something with friends and uh, is uh, can be really tricky um, yeah. where you don't make good uh, agreements with each other so at a certain point we uh Everyone took his own way, and I decided that I wanted to learn more about the yeah the music business side. And um, then I got a job from Sony Music as a project manager on the marketing side for um, for all their uh, U.S. Uh, repertoire and their U.K. repertoire. Okay. So it was my responsibility to make sure that whatever that comes out from. Uh, Epic to Columbia RCA to make sure that the marketing happened in in the Netherlands and Belgium. So I did that for a year, and then my boss told me that maybe it would make more sense for me to do A and R. So yeah, that's actually the moment that we that I got a function name because before we used to do everything from A to Z to make sure that the release or the music, the shows goes well. So yeah, uh, in a, in a speeding uh, to to the moment. Uh, where I worked for Sony Music, I realized that I wanted to work more with, um, instead of marketing like the the releases that come from the US, they tell you, okay, this is important, this is what we need. I I, I recognize that I get more energy and more passion for working on the creation side. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I moved to a uh, universal music imprint it's called Top Notch and Noah's Ark. It's um, actually uh, two record labels that were founded by... Um, they, were f- they were independent at some point, but then they made a deal with Universal Music. And they are the leading um, record labels in the Netherlands, especially on hip-hop. Okay. Um, I grew up with in hip- hip-hop. So then they asked me to join them because they were just... Uh, planning their fusion because the two record labels did a fusion it's two different record labels but the same team on the behind so had you quit sony at that point or uh was it like a yeah it was uh, like like i wasn't really happy at sony um and and i think i wasn't happy because uh, there are a lot of politics at a major label and uh and i i didn't want to be between any kind of politics that doesn't have to do uh, the interest of the the artist and by that time the the company uh, when I started was being led by someone else and at a certain time yeah the managing director changed and we had a different vision on a couple of things and uh, then I decided yeah and then the other job offer came 
and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna focus on uh, on yeah on on the A&R side of of well, and creation and okay. So that's when I moved to to Top Notch and Alice Arc, and now we work together like almost for f- five four years, where I'm responsible for uh, I'm, uh, as a as a A&R manager for finding new talent, but also uh, making sure that the roster of artists that I'm responsible uh, for get to make their music, connect them to producers, other artists. And because of my history of videos and uh, making videos and stuff, I also am able to think about the creation side. So I never like to think in boxes when I'm uh, working with artists. I, I try to do whatever is needed to make it a success. I think I got to learn that from like the independent side where you do everything. And when I went to a major label, I had kind of culture shock of how things went. Everything was really organized. And I tried to be between those two, to use the work ethic from the independent and use use the profession of uh, a major label. So yeah, that's that's what I've been the, doing the last uh, few years. And um and each year it's like I, I i always say i'm 25 now i always say that uh i'm still at school i see it as uh as uh school of life yeah exactly and uh you can never learn enough within this industry and uh, each year i i learn more about uh, in the last two three years i really put a lot of time on the legal side because i wanted to learn more about what am i like what kind of what's a contract what's what's important for a record label, what's important for an artist. And so that that's something that people go to school for, for like f- four to six years. And I see it as a blessing that I can learn while practicing the job at the same time. All right, yeah. so we're going to get into that. I'm just going to wrap up Sony by asking, when you started working for them, did you apply to work for them or did they find you? We did two projects with them when I was working at the independent label. So they, uh, yeah, they, they uh, offered me a job which is pretty cool for a kid to get a job. Yeah, with yeah. It was, I, I, actually, I was the youngest. I think I'm still I'm the youngest. Still the youngest. <laughs> employer they ever had. Uh, nice. Actually, I never applied for a job. So I, I and I'm really blessed and happy that. Uh, Have you ever had a regular job? Like yeah. In a yeah, store yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I applied for those kind of jobs. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, within the industry that uh, I've done a lot of jobs. I did it. Uh, I worked in a clothing shop. I worked in a sneaker shop. I worked. Uh, I sold um, like door to door kind of. St- I did a lot of things before I. Uh, You're 25. You've done yeah. all this stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. Impressive. I have old soul. <laughs> <laughs> I think my soul is double my age. Okay, yeah. so you're a 50 year old, 25 year old. Probably right? almost. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> all right. So let's move into today and the A and R, which is uh, artists and relations, right? Ish. Repertoire, artist and repertoire. Repertoire, yeah, yeah. Uh, which and you were, you said you were responsible for finding new talent. So in theory, you're like a scout. Yeah. Does that mean under normal circumstances, apart from the pandemic, is that like do you go to every concert anywhere? Um, and just uh, and you're you're the guy in the back saying, <coughs> uh, I don't think so. I think that's <laughs> like it's really funny because I had this discussion with my colleague last time. Is the um, traditional meaning of an artist and repertoire manager is someone who's of course finding new talent but also looking for like writers or top liners or and combine that with the artists they are responsible for but within hip-hop and especially when it within dutch hip-hop it's totally different your responsibility because the dutch uh, hip-hop artists i work with they write their songs themselves mm-hmm. most of the time they haven't got any publisher or in the last, I think in the last eight years, we are we, we, we are going to a way where it's more in, a, in the traditional way. But when I started, is like we made a platinum album in, in one of the rooms of my friend. So uh, with just like the, the basic logic and uh, the, like a basic setup. So, yeah, of course, I, do, I go to concerts. And at this moment, you have like Amsterdam Dance Event in Amsterdam. Uh, I go to panels or I go to those kind of places, of course, just to keep track on on that side. But uh, in this digital, uh, uh, yeah, time we are living is I, there is no like exact for formula on how I do it or how 
my colleagues do it, but it's a combination of uh, knowing the correct people. And I, I have several people like that live in Rotterdam or in The Hague or in Amsterdam that I really respect and have a good taste. So it's it's I th- I think a combination of using your network and your ears and eyes on digital uh, platforms and apps like Instagram and Snapchat and yeah. So it's it's a combination of those things and and um, I've never uh, found an artist in the same way. Okay. Um, like for me, I I grew up in in a neighborhood in Rotterdam South that's. Uh, yeah, like it, it is a quiet hip hop neighborhood because we have a, a uh, quiet hip hop neighborhood. No, I like <laughs> I, I mean, like it, it's we, we, when I grew up, we have slow. <laughs> not not. <laughs> let, I mean, like in a way where uh, where uh, I grew up with hip hop artists that were like legendary in the whole country. So from a young age, I saw their lifestyle, what they liked, how they talked, what they. So I think because of that, I I learned. Uh, a way to yeah to to connect with with people that make music, especially hip hop music. And so if you, if I would go to another neighborhood in Amsterdam, it's easier to find or talk to people that have. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah I'm trying yeah. to go. Yeah. And with the, within the years, you develop your network, of course, and your skills. Uh, so can can anyone send you something, or are there like layers you have to get through to get to you? Like how many SoundCloud links do you get saying, check out this joint? Yeah, I listen to everything that has a play button. So if you, wow. se- if you send me an email with a retransfer that I have to download, like, no way. And that's probably not going to work. But if you send me a proper email or most of the time it comes through Instagram DM or to some people find a way that one of my, that they know one of my friends and then they send it to them. So I always try to, keep that part open. I never want to feel the distance between the newest talent and uh, the ones that pop up of Spotify charts or on YouTube trending. And that's also a way, you know, I spend a lot of time online trying to be, uh, to keep track of, of what's already out there. I try to go to, yeah, like you said, like um, you have a lot of, uh, places where you where you do like demo pitching and those kind of things so it's a combination of of uh, of those things and of course it's it's like eight of the 10 things that come through that uh, soundcloud or Insta- instagram dm is most of the time really in the starting uh, stage uh, so i can filter uh, after the, a couple of years i learned how to filter uh, what's good and what 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 makes it good? What uh, do do I I just of course it's it's based on the music, but also on it, does it feel in uh, unique in a way? Who's, how's your appearance? I like to work with people that know what they are doing. Yeah. So if I see that you are you have a good idea of what your artist ideas, if I can call it like that, then I get the interest because. Uh, Within the years, of course, I've worked as well with a lot of people that just were really talented and made really good music, but didn't know anything about how they want to put themselves out there. And if that part isn't developed yet, I try to talk with the artist. Like, I, I'm not a quick signer or something. I I prefer to have uh, spent a lot of time with someone in different situations. Um, I like to test waters and... I have several producers that I really like, so then I put a session for them and see how they work. Um, I look at their socials, like what, yeah, like what kind of appearance do you have? And within the years, you learn a way of of deciding if you want to sign something or not. Yeah. And one big point I forgot is I really respect the taste of the artists I work with right now. So the last artist that I've signed came through one artist that I'm already okay. ignoring. I believe that I'm not the one that has the ultimate ears or eyes. Uh, so I, I always try to get uh, input from people that I like the taste of. Okay. So it's it's mainly Dutch hip hop in Dutch, right? You're working with, yeah. Or is it international yeah. as well? No, it's it's mainly it's mainly uh, Dutch. But within the last years, there are several artists that have potential in West Africa. We have a big artists from Turkey right now, okay. but who lives in in the Netherlands. Belgium as well because our language is similar. Uh, so a Belgian person will understand Dutch rap. 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, if they're from the Flam, because you have the friends and the Flams uh, yeah. side. Um, but in the last years, we have seen that that uh, a lot of songs break through in in UK or in uh, in Africa, in Germany. We we had a, a remix song of of something that worked in our market. And then we put like a future artist from that market, and I think within the digital time that we are living that we don't really have borders as uh, as long as the production and the 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 melody the melody pipe yeah. works then then um, people don't bother that they don't understand the language because there is lo- i think now one song on number three in the spotify charts here in norway from ck and i met him in uh, nigeria i was in nigeria two years ago and that song is a major hit in like the whole world but no one understands what he's saying, the melody, the production, that works. So that's also like a new thing that I'm really focusing on is uh, forgetting the borders and uh, combining artists with each other. But sp- like mainly we do Dutch hip hop. There's obviously something unique with Dutch hip hop. Would you say there's a certain characteristic? Because I've listened to a lot of French rap without understanding French. And I can sort of specify what that is. But yeah. can you specify what Dutch rap is? Is it something unique? Is that, can you put it into words? Yeah. I think like what, what makes Dutch music so universal is is that it's a country that has a lot of ethnicities and cultures in a small country. We are a country of 17 million people. And I grew up from, I had Turkish friends, Moroccan friends, Suriname friends. I had Indian friends. I had like... You, you you get a lot of mixed cultures together yeah. um, and if you use that where you ma- when you're making uh, like productions or uh, your melodies I think that that the Netherlands is uh, a really rich country for uh, like we have top producers that do a lot in US in, in within dance of course but within hip hop as well in the last few years. So yeah, I I wouldn't find the exact explanation where that comes from, but my feeling says it has to do with the fact that we uh, that it's a melting pot. Yeah, it's a melting yeah. pot of cultures and uh, and yeah and and producers, you know, beat makers get to use that in in their events and yeah. So like when when I was in Nigeria and in Ghana in the same year and with an artist who who made his album over there and. Uh, at that point, we found out that we get influenced a lot by West African music because we have a lot of people from there in the Netherlands as well. Yeah. Um, and they are really, for them, it's a refreshing sound because it's not just exactly their sound. It's mixed with maybe an Arabic sound or with an, a Western sound more. And Yeah, so like I think in, in seriously within uh, the next five, ten years that the Netherlands is going to be... Uh, a really important player within uh, our markets. Cool. When you speak to international people about Dutch rap, do they have any like humorous ways of describing what the Dutch lyrics sound like? <laughs> yeah. In in the beginning, like uh, the 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 first like Dutch artist, of course, the Dutch language has a lot of, and yeah. so people people recognize that more. And I think the artist. Um, that are influenced by all these coaches now are more based on melodies instead of like really hard words and yeah it's uh, i think people would like it's totally different than german german have have more like uh, it's more aggressive mm-hmm. and dutch is like really um melodious like uh okay it's uh, even with the <laughs> Yeah, but I- of course you have rappers who <laughs> use it a lot, you know. Yeah, so for you guys, if you would listen to it, that's the first thing probably you hear. But um, I really think that Very the Rick b- Rossish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybach. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's um, it's within hip hop, Dutch hip hop. You have like ten different uh, like people that really make rap rap music and people that uh, folks that has more like the Afro influenced music people that are doing like more the latin kind of music we have a song that's like played over 200 million uh streams and it, it most p- partly uh it, it was uh, uh the song is i think the biggest part comes from the latin side okay um 
and same for the Turkish guy. He has he's really big in Germany, in the UK, and in Turkey now. Uh, but on Dutch kind of music, you know. So it 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 goes all kind of ways. Uh, now you have like the the more I call it more the folks hip hop. So it's more. Uh, uh, I don't think that people from abroad will really appreciate that because it's really Dutchy. But uh, like the more Afro sound works good in the UK, it works good in Sweden, in Norway, in West Africa and stuff. Um, so it goes all, all, all ways. Okay. Melody Pipe is er the network platform for the music branch. Here you can find talent, scenes and music actors, ingo good samarbeid and book concerts on an easy, oversiktlig and trygg måte genom an open and social platform. Lag en profil, vis vad du har att tillby och utvid nätverket ditt. Vi ses på melodypipe.com. Yeah. So when you grew up you were obviously into Dutch rap or you into I mean what what kind of music did did they play in your childhood home? Like what, yeah. what kind of music did your parents listen to? If they did. Uh, of course our traditional air train music, uh, Ethiopian music. Uh, my mom. You're gonna have to explain to us what is Eritrea and y- what kind of music is that. I think it's you can hear it back in in reggae, maybe a bit. You okay. can hear it back in. It's difficult to describe because it's it's everything is made with instruments and uh, instrument based. Um, is it like dance? Not dance music, as in t- electric, but is it like is it very vibrant? Yes, exactly. Very yeah, it's like if you if you'd go to an um, Air train party or something, you will definitely uh, dance all night. Dance long. all night, yeah. It's really dance, ba- but also we have like like what what I really love and what my mom played a lot as well is uh, Ethiopian jazz. Oh, nice! Um, like all all those kind of things is is what uh, what I was uh, growing up with from home. But my cousins and stuff they were listening to, yeah, name it like uh, Public Enemy, uh, Tupac, uh, Biggie. And that was more the the hip hop side that uh, actually what I preferred more at that time. Now yeah. I love to, pl- to when I come home I I don't listen that much to hip hop. I prefer like jazz and soul and uh, like R and B classics and stuff because it's more uh, peaceful. Yeah, uh, but it's a melt as well from from all kind of. Uh, so who would you say was your first sort of hero like rapper? If you have one, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Yeah, right. yeah, I loved Lil Wayne. I still love Lil Wayne. Um, Tupac, I listened a lot to Tupac. Uh, in the Netherlands, we listened a lot to Dutch music as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were like local heroes for me that uh, nowadays I can work with like directly. And so that makes this the full circle at the end for me that I listened a lot to US music as well. And, and but it it wasn't uh, I wasn't engaged with it that much with like I was with with Dutch music okay. because you can like I in in when I was younger of course I spoke I spoke uh, English and understood it but not as good as I understood Dutch so yeah. if someone says something in Dutch you can feel it more or understand it more um, so actually like the two biggest artists I listen to Vin and F mm-hmm. shout out to you guys are uh, guys that I'm A&Ring today they nice. as well. So that's really... Um, so they were heroes when you were a kid and now you get to work with them? Yeah. yeah. Were, were you starstruck when you got a chance to to work with them? Yeah, like the um, my first like uh, hip-hop show that I've witnessed was from Vina. And uh, when I started to work for the uh, Tom Notch, um, I knew that he was on that record label. So... When my boss asked me, like, uh, which artist do you would you like to work with? I was like, I would love to work with Vin. I would love to work with Hef because th- it felt like I already knew them because I listened so much to their music. And I think that the biggest blessing in this work is to, yeah, like y- and you have to try to understand an artist that much to uh, service them. So I was I I got to know them as a fan. And now I got to know them as a person, and that combination is worth uh, is worth a lot. So, all the artists I I work with or want to work with, I have to be a fan of your music to truly service you max in the max way I can. Yeah, but yeah. did you act like a 
fanboy when no, you met them? No, 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 because <laughs> that's what I meant with like where I grew up. It 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 wasn't. Uh, it was common to see like famous people or okay. like uh, so i found a way to be comfortable and still show my respect for for okay. what they did and i think that's what uh, what's appreciated in within hip hop uh, you can't be a fanboy uh, too much because then like i i like to be critical about about their music as well so if i would be approaching it as a fan then i would always say this is this is nice, man. It, <laughs> we have to release this, you know. But yeah, um, yeah I try to approach it uh, in a combination of both. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, considering you know Dutch, then lyrics is important to you. Yeah. And whether or not it's important to the international artist, mm-hmm. uh, is that something you, uh, when you when you guys make music, when you when you find the path of the artist, do you have like a ratio of what's most important in terms of production and words, or is it just to get a feel? Yeah, I, I try to uh, use data and insights in combination with gut feeling. So when an artist is loved because of his lyrics, then he shouldn't make a switch okay. radically to uh, just the production and easy hooks and uh, verses that say not a lot, you know. So and most of the time the artists they understand that part, but uh, when I listen to a demo, I try to, or w- when we try to uh, choose a single or something, I, I try to, get, uh, we make artist IDs. So before we start any kind of project, we talk a lot with each other, we look at data, and then we say, okay, I think this is who you are, this is why people love you, and to sustain this, we need to do this and this and this. So. Yeah, I don't want to say like I don't approach it as you have to make hits or something because some artists don't. Some artists have to sustain um, the picture they are for for their fans, you know. And like the the artists I was just talking about, Half is and Vienna, they are in the game for more than ten years. Uh, so th- uh, they're important. The most important thing for them is sustainability instead of making hits each year. Uh, but for some artists at this point who are just in uh, like uh, emerging artists or breakthrough artists, you approach it different than uh, like yeah. So some some make really catchy hooks, but then it's the mission to make sure that maybe they have a featuring artist on on it that can fulfill your lyrics um, that you want to hear on the song. Mm. So it's really based on the artist. I think it's. Uh, I would never tell an artist uh, you have to talk about this or you have to say this. I think the 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 power is to recognize what yeah what 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 they are feeling or what they what they're trying to explain and uh, translate that to uh, a complete album. Like uh, the most fun part, I think, is selecting. Like last uh, month, one of my artists released an album and he made too much songs. Okay. As in, like he really good songs, and he released too many songs, or he just no, no, made like too in, many songs? in the last year he was making his album, and he made like sixty songs, and we we had to choose like eighteen, seventeen to put on the album, um, and from that p- moment when you're gonna select, uh, yeah, the album, you try to base it on what what do one people wanna hear on your, uh, yeah, it like. Uh, a couple love songs, a couple rap songs, a couple vibely songs, and and then you have to make like boxes of 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 the categories I just uh, named, and then you have to look okay which one is better than this, okay which production is better, maybe you have to redo this first, maybe we have to uh, talk to the producer to do this. So that's like an um, yeah the most fun part of of uh, of my work I think because I try to picture it as a fan at that point point as well. So when I click on an artist album, I want to experience and feel some kind of emotions. Yeah. Um, was that a brutal process, going from 60 to yeah, 17? Yeah, yeah, and thank God, because he just entered for the fourth week on number one in, in the Netherlands. So nice. uh, people love the album. And uh, of course, it's like, it's uh, sometimes you have to argue someone once this song, and you will never know if if it was the best choice because maybe if we took the other one and finished it 
the album would go more better, you know. So yeah. it's always uh, uh, there is no book or module on how to do this. It's um, gut feeling be- uh, in combination with uh, data. He still has. 43 songs that he can release on album number exactly, 23. Exactly, exactly. And the thing is, meanwhile, he made probably 20, 30 new songs. So, <laughs> yeah, that keeps me yeah. awake as well, you know. it's yeah. uh, All right, so so one of your many tasks is to sort of help the artists shape their, their uh, to be the best they can be. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel as a sort of uh, industry professional when you see someone like, I know he's huge. Kanye is huge. And we're not going to talk about Kanye, but he's fearless in terms <laughs> of changing up everything. Yeah. And he's being disruptive. Is that motivating or is that like, oh, for fuck's sake, anything can happen? I, I find um, it really interesting because, um, of course, the last few months, the Drake and Kanye discussion is one of the most we talked about. And um, he likes to in- innovate himself. Yeah. As a person, as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as everything. Um, and I think that's also one of the things that people like about him. Uh, so for him, if he would try to make a hit album, it would, him, it, it would probably take him more like... Um, he knows he doesn't want to go on that path. You know, it's it's better for him to make the most innovative uh, album in... in in, in who he is as an artist. Um, and for Drake, probably is uh, he wouldn't be like really focusing on making an innovative album because he's known for the hits on his album and those yeah. kind of things. So I think that, of course, as a fan, you would love to have a hit album of Kanye and innovative co- album of Drake. But in, 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 uh, if we're talking about sustainability, they are exactly doing what's the best for them on the long term. Um, so if an artist is uh, if he's one of the most important uh, things of, of, of his uh, ideas is that he is innovative, then it's important to do to show that in videos, in approaching, in marketing, in music, of course. And I, I find Kanye a really interesting. I'm not a fan of his music, but I find him a really interesting um, mogul or... Of, or yeah, I think he uh, and his team, team of course, because uh, he probably has a good team. Um, they are, yeah, they know exactly who, uh, why people like him. Yeah, I'm just obviously he has he's reached a point where he, he's successful no matter what. But uh, I just find it very interesting that he he takes all these risks. Yeah. Just, uh, and the reason why I ask is because I've I've spoken to so many artists in here, and then I ask. Uh, and then we start talking about genre and so many artists say I don't want to be defined by genre yeah. I, obviously hip hop is a quite a quite a statement genre it's not like you don't tweak outside of hip hop you're either hip hop or you're not you can add certain things but I was just wondering whether or not artists in your label feel like I'm not a rapper I'm a I'm an artist <laughs> have that that yeah. very artsy kind of thing I th- I think like th- there are two genres that have and and maybe hip hop is the biggest like it's culture driven mm. so the culture hip hop isn't just a genre i think and i think rock has uh, has the same uh, i'm i'm trying to have an example like there is an artist in the netherlands that when he break through he was uh, he break through as a rapper with good melodies okay uh, so he would have a good hook with a good melody and on his verses, he would like straight on fire uh, verses where uh, where he raps. Um, but for him now, it was an easy way to influence Afro kind of music in his in his uh, in his beats and and stuff. And people took it. So it depends on on um, like as as long as uh, it it sounds good and and it 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 fits the picture. People were always. Uh, be willing to listen to it and um, and and not see it as a genre, but they will see your how you developed in the years and how you uh, if you go back to your repertoire and from the beginning they will be like oh yeah it makes sense that he choose to to do this you know yeah um, but yeah of course like people uh, uh, of, of, of 
artists that I work with wouldn't just define themselves as hip hop genre artists because sadly in the Netherlands uh, like radio and TV isn't really supportive for hip hop mm -hmm. so you would close yourself out if you would just say that and of course like everyone supports and loves the culture of hip hop and but approaching it as an artist is always the best way so uh, in terms of the pandemic and the changing of the entire world how do you feel the A&R job has changed and what different what what changes will do you see on the horizon as sort of permanent based on this how has your job changed um and how has the last year and a half been for you compared to earlier yeah like we uh, so our most like most offices our office uh, uh, were closed and um i used it in my advance to spend even more time with my artist mm -hmm. so uh I uh, I found a way of doing my emails, uh, doing my calls in the morning, and like from twelve one, I would just plan like every. I made sure every day I was seeing one of the artists that I work with or artists that I want to work with, or yeah, like it g gave me more space to 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 put time in the most part, in the most important part of our job, and that's the relation uh, with your artist, with the producers, with your colleagues as well so and now i go to office like once or twice a week so that's i think the the biggest difference in in long time is that people have seen that yeah it's not quite an office job it's of course it's important for the meetings we have on on, yeah. on uh, even that you can do through zoom or in, and so the pandemic improved the workflow then sort of yeah it it um you you had the chance uh, actually you were forced to do it that way because th there was no other option and now people see that this works probably better in the long term um especially in my responsibility of course we have like a re legal department and a creative department that works like almost the whole week at the office um but in my job it's uh yeah we have seen like uh, that that's it's not it's not about being at the office it's about being in the field and about being with the people that uh, you service is this a job you uh, f see yourself in for the rest of your life or is it like a young man's game what you're doing right now good question i um i would definitely uh keep working in the music business uh but slightly in a different uh i think if i would be uh 40 let's say if i'm 40 that would be more difficult to be to keep track on what's happening on the bottom yeah. uh, because when you're young like uh, we we got big success in that time when i worked at the independent because we understood youtube like we and when instagram came we understood instagram because we were the people who were using it mm -hmm. um so I think I would more be consulting and 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 advising and um, yeah, but I would never like say I'm totally gonna stop with the music business and yeah, I, I would try to to use my experience to to give it back to the next generation. The reason why I asked is because there's a label on your uh, <laughs> sweater, yeah, uh, which is your label, right? Yes, yes, it's. Uh, called how, do you, how do you pronounce it in Dutch? No, nah, it's I tr I try to approach it internationally, but it's okay. called Palette. Palette. Yes, right. palette is uh, which is palette, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, and um, it's inspired by uh, yeah because we're gonna combine colors and comfort. So uh, you went with the gray one. <laughs> yeah, like because <laughs> I thought least colorful. It, it fits good <laughs> in the in the no right. no, but the, um, <laughs> yeah, like it's it's I actually also started from something that uh, like I said when I started we did uh, like. Uh, at the, at the at the school where I was, we did like printing shirts and those kind of things. And I always uh, looked uh, into fashion because I like, uh, yeah, I like fashion. And um, what I've seen is uh, that yeah, the people that I work with and myself, we love to wear tracksuits and yeah. comfortable clothes. And um, so, in the last years, I've been thinking about yeah, which kind of product would I would I be able to sell to people except for music? Yeah. Because I got to learn a lot about the public 
of the fans and who they are. We did a lot of like focus groups and 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 then I seen that they are really influenced on their clothing taste by artists. So do all your artists now have palette clothes? Yeah, actually, the four of my <laughs> partners of palette are uh, are artists that I okay. work with and that I'm responsible for as a and R manager. Um, and uh, yeah, we we I, I made sketches, I designed it, and uh, they loved it. And uh, cool. And yeah, from there I uh, so, but it it wouldn't be something I would swap for music because because of music I got to understand what the consumer wants, mm -hmm. um, and if that would be this class in the future, then I would love to try that because. Music gave me the opportunity to learn about what marketing is, what, um, how how you can use influence on on selling products. On it's something that's perfectly combined in in the work that I do. So if we turn the clock forward five years and you're CEO of Palette and it's bigger than Adidas, would you still say I'm a musician? I'm, I'm, I'm working in the music industry. Yeah, probably in a different <laughs> skill, but. Um, like the people that I work with right now, like people become friends, you get serious, good relations. And, and so I wouldn't like swap that uh, because of, because of that, I, I got the chance to, to find out more about what I like and what I want to do. Mm. Um, but I would definitely at maybe hire people so I get more time to, to keep uh, doing the music thing as well. So we're closing in on the end, but in every episode we have this standardized uh, questionnaire and you either make it complicated or you make it easy. That's up to you. But it's the same questions for every guest. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to go through them. The first question, is there a song, any song by any artist that you feel is sort of your song? It's about you. It's the song you put on to get in the right groove. Uh, yeah, actually I do. It's... Uh it's a Dutch song as well, uh -huh. and it's also an art, an artist that I that I just uh, mentioned. Uh, it's Hef Laiomana. Hef is the artist, and Laiomana. Yeah, is the is the title, and it says "lazy men," <laughs> and literally, uh, and <laughs> what he describes in the song is um, in a in a time where I uh, like uh, when I stopped school and. I felt like uh, miserable and you know uh, something all teenagers have at a certain point mm -hmm. that song really g motivated me because what he says is like la on la lazy men will are not worth anything in this world and that's why I'm telling you wake up stand up and do your thing mm -hmm. um, and he says you can combine going to school and it was really like in a in a cool way he was he was telling each person that that didn't know what to do with his life stand up there is enough spot for everyone in, in this world okay i try to listen as much as possible to that song because it reminds me till to the moment where i felt like i couldn't do anything and uh, so thanks Hef. that's a, that's a great compliment to him yes. second question do you sing in the shower or and is there is there a certain <laughs> type of music you only sing in the shower uh like do you think I'm, opera I'm in the really like I have tried to to be a rapper myself when I was really young. <laughs> I I I cannot sing. I cannot rap properly, but in the shower. I can sing like everyone does, <laughs> and uh, I love reggae music in the shower. Okay, and uh, especially Bob Marley, and uh, it just gives me like the and at this point actually I'm listening a lot to Ama Piano, the South African house. Uh huh. And that's more dancing than than singing. So you dance in the shower, then. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And uh, <laughs> because I try to like, uh, I really think that uh, when I shower each morning, like that's the uh, that has influence on how you will feel that day. So I try to listen to music that makes me happy. Or okay, uh, what deceased artist would you love to bring back, primarily just to get more music out of that person? There is. Um, one artist that uh, sadly uh, passed away almost three years now. His name is Feis, and um, he's also one of the artists that, when I uh, was young and my first musical, sh like uh, 
the show I saw from artist was from him in Vienna, so the one I spoke uh-huh. earlier about. And he sadly got uh, killed three years ago in Rotterdam. And uh, we were working um, on his album uh, two months before it happened. Uh, so that's something actually in that period I was really considering to stop like everything that I was doing because it really touched uh, me emotional and um, especially because I knew like what kind of good guy he was and um, and the music that he was making and we were, we were like finishing the album. So I would definitely say uh, his music and... Uh, do you get a chance to release any of the stuff? Yeah, recorded? no, we, we haven't done that uh, because uh, it's for us uh, the most important thing is that when the family is uh, ready for that, because it's still uh, it's r- still heavy for for the family and for us for everyone who uh, who knew him. Mm. Um, but I would definitely, uh, if that was possible, then I would definitely. Uh, uh, bring yeah. him back yeah yeah. I understand um, slightly more happy question now uh, what's uh, what's the most surprising guilty pleasure music l- you listen to if you refer to it as guilty pleasure uh, like do you listen to Celine Dion when no one's watching <laughs> for instance <laughs> no I um, yeah and but I love I love um some really like poppy kind of songs sometimes it's n- it, it's not my favorite uh, taste of music but sometimes if i uh before going out or something with friends and then we have this classic playlist of like poppy songs okay yeah cool and 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 actually i there is a i like some kind of sing single songwriter songs with the guitar and just uh and, and we do that like you guys have Vorspiel and, and that kind of things. But in the Netherlands, we we have a kind of song, kind of thing where when we gather before we go out, and uh, then sometimes we do it like karaoke, those kind of stuff. And then I always pick the singer songwriter songs okay. because I uh, it's really like uh, really like like smoothie songs and stuff. And it's yeah, it's uh, sometimes I like that. Yeah. Uh, is there a specific artist that you can admit to having uh, sort of ripped off their clothing style? Sort of wanted to look exactly like that person? Uh, yeah, P. Diddy. P. Diddy. P. Right. Diddy, yeah, yeah. Like I the really, white uh, suits? Or yeah, or? like, uh, <laughs> uh, shout out to his style because uh, because he, like, I like to uh, switch from styles when uh, based on, on the place or where, where I'm going. Uh-huh. Um, Do you I'm also I have different names for your different business ventures, <laughs> like with your personal name? Yeah, but actually, my my the the, the name Solomon is is my uh, uh, my grandpa's name. Okay, uh, so it's my mom's last name, and my first name is Senai. Senai. Yeah. Uh, but when I at certain point I um, got my dad's last name, that's Kefle, and. I was really proud of the name Solomon because I always heard that you look like your grandpa. And so then I said, you know what? I'm going to change my uh, Facebook name to Solomon, to both of my last names. Yeah. And at a certain point, like from being really young till now, people had in their mind that my name is Solomon, my first name. So actually my music business name is (laughs) Solomon Kefle, but my complete name is Senai Sirak Solomon Kefle. It works. Yeah. It works. But P. D- back to, uh, to P. Diddy, what I like about him is um, I'm in this kind of uh, Edison Award Commission. So it's the biggest music award show in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. And those moments, so going to an award show or going to those kind of things, I like to overdress almost in, in, <laughs> in how classy and how, and that's what Diddy does as well. He can wear a tracksuit today with the fly sneakers and yeah. coolest glasses and tomorrow look really formal and classic. So shout out to B. Diddy for uh, inspiring <laughs> me on that. <laughs> nice. Uh, by the way, do you have a nickname as well? Like in France? Like a, like a short one? Yeah, but I, like... You can't uh, say it out loud? No, people... 
people come with the stupidest name because in <laughs> there is one uh, friend of me the uh, yeah I'm not gonna say it because I'm afraid that it comes up again you know group ah, chat okay. <laughs> no but it's like yeah you tell me afterwards yeah, yeah I'll do that I'll do that <laughs> do you play any instruments by the way no what would be the number one instrument you wish you could play piano keys yeah keys all right definitely cool I actually I had I had a, I went to um, to when I was like twelve or something I went to a courses to to learn that but sadly. My teacher, he always fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he was a really old guy, and and for me, like actually, my mom partly forced me to go to to take the course. So I, when he fell asleep, I would just wait till he wakes up. Instead of, I wasn't hungry enough by that time to to learn it, and I really feel bad because it would have been a a good skill. But I mean, considering you're learning all the time and you're always in school, you can, in theory. Yeah, I can still do it. I can still, yeah. Like in the and I I also think that in the last seven seven years were re- really like um, hectic in a way uh, and now in 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 the last year I and maybe because of the pandemic as well I found more peace in in the way I work because I was like running like chicken without head all the times you know and and thank God I never had a burnout or something but. Um, now I find the importance as well of uh, of personal growth, just of, uh, instead of work growth, and 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 I see learning keys as personal growth as well. You really are a fifty year old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So the uh, the next question is odd, but it's fun. Uh, way, way, way in the future when you're not here anymore, and there's potentially a memorial concert for you. Where would that concert be held, and who would play at that concert? And you don't have to think about them being famous eighty years from now, but yeah. who would you want to play at your specific Solomon uh, yeah. memorial concert? It's uh, it's a good question, actually. My my dear friend, um, she has a podcast, and her subject is which three songs would you like to have on your funeral? Funeral, okay. And I have thought about that. But I'm going to answer your question. Uh-huh. Um, have you been a guest on her show, by the way? So no, no, no. But I, I have one of my <laughs> artists has. So I because of that, I was thinking it. like, yeah, that's a good question. I've never thought about it. And very good question. It would be awful if you have music on your funeral that you don't even like, you know. <laughs> so please, everyone, think about it. Music <laughs> is important. Yeah, He's not alive, but I, I would definitely try to have the music that I just uh, name so the music uh-huh. that made me happy uh reggae um i would love the artists that i worked with to 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 play they all know which song i love from them it's gonna be a huge concert then yeah pro- let's do a artists. like concert show and in, 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 uh, in the alphas in ziggo dome or something that's our concert uh no but i, I would love to um yeah, uh, capture that moment as uh, like the song I just named, like Half Life Money, like all the songs that did something for me in my life that um, that I would be able to share that with my family and my dearest at that uh, moment. It's really crazy to think about this, actually. <laughs> but uh, the good thing is that you're not going to be there. No, you just have to think about it. Yeah, now. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, yeah, like uh, good vibes. I wouldn't like people to be sad and hear sad music. I would, I want people should celebrate my life. Cool, yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah. All right. So the final question that everyone gets is either very complicated or very easy. What is music to you? Music is something that changed my life. So at first, as a as a listener, as a consumer, and I really got uh, like like I mentioned, I. Uh, Actually, I, we we always hopped from country to country, and as a young kid who came to the Netherlands, and uh, I found really big support from music, and uh, the fact that I, because I, I had a passion for it, and now I'm able to work full time in it, is like the biggest gift you can get, and that's why I think that the biggest therapy in life is music. Um, so I that's uh, I, that's also how I, w- 
I try to approach it when I'm working for it. Um, so yeah, like without music, I think it it would have take a long time for me to find out what what I have to do in this world. I like that answer. Let's so end on that note. Thanks to all the people that make music, producers, artists, singer songwriters, composers, everyone. So everyone get a palette tracksuit and where can we find your artists? What, why, what do we search for in terms of online? Uh, yeah, the, the best thing is to keep track of the Instagram of Top Notch uh, Top and Notch. Noah's Ark. Those are the two uh, record labels that I work with now. And uh, yeah, same for Palette. You can follow us. You can like keep track of Melody Pipe and you'll probably see us soon again, man. Cool. <laughs> All right, Solomon, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. All right, cool. That's it, folks. End of the line. I really hope you learned something. I hope you start looking into Dutch rap. It is definitely worth a listen. My thanks to Solomon for being here. My thanks to you for either watching or listening. We'll see each other again soon. My name is Andreas. Anyhow, this has been Melody Pod, the official podcast of MelodyPipe.com. Check it out, people. See ya. Du har hört en podcast av Melody Pipe. Registrer dig idag på melodypipe.com. Lyden är er spilt in med utstyr från Forsound.